So, Allison, the uh, what what give us a sense of of how many uh, women who are uh, that are vets now, because I imagine we are entering an era. I mean, just in in, in the same respect that we did when uh, women became um, uh, not just obviously women have been part of the military for uh, well more than decades, probably. But uh, in terms of 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 of, of of battle, uh, seeing battle, we're entering in an era now where we have women who are e reaching middle age in some respects uh, and are requiring a whole new set of services from um, uh, the VA and, frankly, uh, benefits from uh, our, our country that we haven't experienced in the past. Well, so currently about 10 percent of the around 21 million uh, American veterans are women. Uh, over 345,000 have deployed uh, since post 9-11. I would be one of them. Uh, I went to Iraq twice, uh, got out of the Army in 2008, um, and have been a patient of the VA myself. And I can personally attest to the fact that there is still a great deal of not only, um, like, uh, changes to the services that we need to make to make sure that women are fully supported, but also cultural change. Uh, and as it, as it relates to the numbers, Sam, uh, the proportion of the veterans population uh, or percentage of women will be going up over the next five years as the male one declines rapidly. In fact, we're the largest growing segment of the veteran population. Interesting. And so, all right, so give us a sense of, of, of what I guess the 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 first order of needs are that are distinct from um, uh, male veterans. Well, you know, I'd say first and foremost, um, IVA She Who Born the Battle campaign is branded that way because from the top down, we need cultural change at the VA. Uh, in fact, I would argue that we're not going to really get the uh, the congressional support or the public support behind improving services uh, and people actually knowing that there's an urgent need for that until everybody sort of gets that people who look like me are veterans, that mm -hmm. the VA doesn't alienate them when they walk in the door. Um, our She Who Born the Battle campaign is a play on the VA's current motto, which is uh, to care for him who shall have borne the battle and his widow and his orphan. Uh, so IVA in traditional style is aggressively taking on uh, culture change by asking for a change to the motto itself. Interesting. And um, uh, the, I mean, I mean, give us a sense of I mean, what are the, I mean, I guess there's like obviously just uh, expectations and just sort of perceptions. And I would imagine to a certain extent they're changing as, um, as, as we're entering, you know, younger people have uh, a different perspective on these things, but where where is the sort of I guess the the cultural uh, obstacles and what you know when it translates into personnel? I mean, what are we looking at? Just um, older military vets? I mean, is this a uh, still a problem? I guess I should put it this way: Are we dealing with a generational problem or a sort of a, I guess a demographic problem? In other words, is it because we have older uh, people associated maybe with uh, the VA, or is it because um, they come from uh, cultures within the United States that still have a hard time with the notion that uh, men and women are now both serving in the military? I mean, Sam, I would argue that it's actually an American problem. Um, you know, IEA aspires to change the way that America sees veterans. Um, so when you close your eyes, you see somebody who looks like me, uh, to give your listeners uh, a feel for me, I'm 35, I'm in good shape. Uh, I hope some people would say, like, you know, an attractive woman. And when you close your eyes, you say uh, somebody who's got a hat and gray hair and is probably, I don't know, in their 80s. Um, if you think of a young guy, it's probably, you know, a young white guy with tattoos. Um, and, you know, at a very basic level, women... Uh, aren't getting the recognition for their service because they they don't even know we exist. Like I know in the abstract that we know that women are uh, graduating from Ranger School or going into the infantry, but it just sort of ha really hasn't um, like sunk into the American psyche that we're there. And that's why IVA members are telling us, uh, women members in our recent survey said that 
only 27% of them believe that the uh, public respects their service, 27%, Mm -hmm. which means that 73% think that women um, and and their service and their contributions to the military don't get the respect that they deserve. And that, I think, is why you see um, women being scolded for parking in vets-only parking spaces when they themselves have served or when they walk into the VA and they're with their spouse, who's a male who hasn't served, and he gets waited on instead of her. Um, So that's like... You know, that's what you're seeing inside of the VA, but it's really, I think, a larger problem um, that we just, we really want the culture in America to shift, to really embrace um, not only the changing demographics across the board of the veteran population, which is very much a part of what IVA does for the post-9-11 generation, but specifically this year, our priority is to make sure that women get the recognition that they deserve. Well, uh, where do, what does that number compare to? You said 27%, uh, only 27% of uh, female vets feel that their service is appreciated. What, what would that be? Do you have any idea of what it is for male vets? Just curious as to what the, um, I mean, just how much, I mean, that, that would give us a sense, right, of, of like what that, um, uh, what, that, what that sense is. And because, um, well, I mean, uh, do you have a sense of what that, that number would be? I can't speak off the cuff about it. Uh, it's something that we've we asked women about, you know, specifically their experience because this is an issue that's been bubbling up for a while. Right. Um, I can certainly follow up with you, sir, which probably won't sure. work well for your podcast. But um, well, I mean, no, that's that's fine. I mean, I'm just curious because I wonder, you know, and 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 I wonder if we were to um, uh, take a survey of the American public where, um, you know, what their perception would be. But I guess, you know, from an anecdotal standpoint, um, the the idea that uh, women are not appreciated for their service in the same way that men are is is fairly, it seems to me, uh, obvious. And it's got to be an an additional burden, I would imagine, on a a vet to feel like uh, their contribution was not registered in any way. Yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's as simple as that too. It's really just um, listen. We all have biases, right? Myself included, about like some things in the world. Um, and so, you know, I think a lot of it is reasonable. Um, you know, I grew up in the age of GI Joe, and you know, it it takes time to really uh, change the way that people see things and to break through those biases. Um, but that's why awareness is such a key component of our campaign. That's why we're talking to folks like you, Sam. Um, but that's also why we are encouraging women to tell their stories. Um, you know, we wouldn't be the first uh, segment of the female population that isn't doing ourselves a good service by, like, not sharing our stories, right? I think you hear it in corporate America a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but really being comfortable with our service and sharing our stories ourselves. In fact, I was at the Bipartisan Women's Caucus um, last fall, and I said, you know, I have to take, uh, as a former officer in the military myself, um, first of all, personal accountability for this because, you know, I haven't been sharing my story enough. Um, I was so eager once I got out to be recognized for my professional contributions beyond the military that I actually kind of stuffed my service into a bag. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a vet thing, too, you know, at least for most of the vets that I respect to, like, not, um, you know, wear your medals on your, your chest, so to speak. Um, but we have to be comfortable with telling our story so people understand that, that women who look like me, women who are young single mothers, um, that, that they, too, are part of the veteran population, that it's not what we all envision in our mind, you know, at Legion Halls across the country, uh, that, that have been there for so many years, um, you know, which is not only so different for our generation by sort of the look and feel of where our veteran population, quote, hangs out, um, mm. but also where... Uh, you know, our, our gender is like so dramatically different, um, especially being as youthful as we continue to be as the wars go on for, you know, we're past 15 years now. All right. We've got to take a quick break. We're talking to Allison Jaslow from uh, IAVA about uh, the, their push to uh, raise awareness both um, in our culture, but also as reflected in legislation. Uh, of the service that women provide to our military and as uh, vets. we got to take a quick break. When we come back, let's talk specifically about some of that legislation. We'll be right back. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio.